So now my life is from a broke Uber driver to a self-made millionaire and I became in just two years. And I, I know if someone will ever tell me in 2017, 18, that when I used to cry, that in just a few years, you're going to become a millionaire, I will probably think those people are crazy because Aloha, beautiful Abundance in Action podcast listeners and viewers. My name is Krista Ra Lakshmidetan. And here in Abundance in Action podcast, we believe that each one of us has a treasure box inside. And once we put our hand in there, we can start to get those treasures out and get them to serve us on our terms so that we can all start to live our dreams on our terms. And today we have a very special guest actually coming on uh, live from Miami. Aloha, Pavel. Aloha, yeah. Thank you for having me. And Pavel Ili is um, actually um, also becoming uh, not only a mentor, a coach in my life, but also a very good friend. And um, he and I have one thing similar because our roots are also um, in Europe. And later, um, Pavel actually adventured alone to United States and started to create his dreams on, on his terms. And today we have a possibility to get to know him, also hear his stories and where he actually can also give tips and tools to each of our listener and viewer, and also how to become a seven-figure coach or how to become a millionaire. So stay tuned and welcome, Pavel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm very excited to uh, give you some value to all your audience. And uh, ask me any question relating to life, business. I would love to give you my feedback. And uh, I hope this message is going to inspire a lot of people. Because if I was able to do it, anyone can do it. Um, I'm not special than anyone in the world. We're all humans. But what, what makes successful people become successful? It's because they're doing something that most people are not doing that so if i can share that with you i'll be more than happy and please ask me any questions i'm all yours <laughs> yeah, thank you thank you first of all um to say yes to this podcast as it came out you haven't really done any of those before and also our first recording was a little challenge so we are re-recording it so i totally you know, honor that you took that extra time because your time is valuable so that more people can listen to your messages and, you know, make those shifts. So I'm very, very grateful. Right. And uh, you're absolutely right because I got so many requests in the last 2020, 2021 from uh, LA because I moved from California to Miami and from the local magazine uh, to do broadcast and do interviews. And I'm kind of like wanted to be in my world. So this interview that I'm going to give you, it's the first one that I've ever given. So uh, yeah. I hope your audience is going to enjoy and um, I, will, uh, I will share the steps and the challenge that I have been through in the United States, which I believe many people, people that are going to listen to this recording do not look at me because I'm a millionaire. I want you to look, what have I done when life hits you in the face? That's what the most challenge is because I believe challenges are the best way to discover yourself. And the question is not why this happened to me. When things happen to you, that means it's the only way to discover your potential. That's exactly what happened to me. So let's move forward. Ask me the questions and I will give you the answers. Yeah. So one thing which has been also very interesting in my own life, when I look back and I think that, uh, wow, maybe one of the reasons I have been and become so resilient and persistent with whatever I do, wherever in the world I end up, is exactly because I was growing up in Soviet Union, which at the time was going through lots of hardships and there was not much like, you know, even food wise, we had to like improvise, you know, 
And you come from like similar environment. And what would you say, how did that prepare you for the rest of the journey, what you had actually in United States? Uh, was that a nice uh, boot camp for you as well? Yeah. So the people that know a little bit about the Soviet Union. Um, so I was born in 1985 in Moldova. Uh, Kishinev, which is the capital of Moldova. It's a very, very tiny, small country in, in Eastern Europe. Um, I believe we have less than 3 million people, and uh, uh, which a lot of people left. So I moved in 2006 from Moldova to the United States. It was a dream since I was a kid. And um, in my mind, because a lot of people ask me that there is so many other places in the world you can become successful. So you're absolutely right. There is a lot of places in the world. It's very important the world that you build in your mind. So in my mind, I build it. The only place to succeed that was the United States. I build it. I manifested that. I, I, I meditated. So to me, it was... I knew that I will go to the U.S. And in 2006, I just... Uh, that was my first year in the uh, university. My mom wanted me to become a lawyer, which, thank you, God, I have not became a lawyer because I had a different path. So I just got into the university. And two months later, I got an opportunity to go to the embassy and apply for the work and travel visa as a student to come to the U.S. for three months and getting the experience and coming back home. So. A lot of students got denied and I was one of the 10 people that they approved my visa. And that was the moment that probably the most happy moment in my life. One of the moments that I felt so um, like I knew at that moment I was 21 years old and I knew that I'm going to America to become a millionaire. And I had no idea what I had to go through. Uh, but deep in my soul, I knew that. So, again, um, America, it's not the only place to become successful. There's a lot of beautiful places. I build it in my own world. So, I practice law of attraction a lot. And it's a very powerful tool that many people are not using because a lot of people don't believe in that and people believe in that. So, Law of attraction, the universe is you. When you realize that the universe is you and anything that you think about, you're going to attract in your life, it will happen. It will happen. I, I'm a proven example. So in my world, that was America. And uh, in 2006, in May, I moved to the U.S. for the first time. No English. I didn't have no relationship in the United States. And the agency that my mom paid, that was 3,000 euro. The agency that we pay uh, for me uh, to meet me in, in, in the United States, that company, for some reason, they took the money from, I believe, 27 students, uh, 3,000 euro. And when we all landed, so I landed in one state, a lot of people landed in different states. End up that company took the money and never came to the airport. So Everyone was in a huge shock. The next day, my mom was in that office. The office was closed. So then we knew that 2006, 2007, there were a lot of company giving you the visa, taking the money, but they did not provide you the three months place to sleep and the, the job. But I'm very grateful that at least I was able to come to the U.S., and then, uh, yeah. So, so what did you what did you do in such a situation? Most people would be like totally freaked out and try to figure out how to get back home. But what happened to you? What did you do? So my life is very interesting because uh, a lot of people think it's like a movie. I have no idea. But the state that I landed was Orlando, Florida. And uh, the only bag, the luggage that I had got lost it. And my, um, my airline was Delta. I remember even now, I think so. I saved even the plane ticket just to, to have it in my life. So I lost my luggage. I couldn't find my luggage. I end up at the airport until the next day, I believe uh, 7, 8 in the morning. And there was those buses that 
you know, shuttle, they come to the airport and they take you. So I took the bus to Pensacola, Pensacola Beach. Uh, that was the place. And uh, <laughs> I end up on the beach. Yeah, my, I, I, I believe I had in my pocket, my mom gave me $120. That was a lot of money f- uh, in 2006. Just you to know, my mom was a math teacher and the salary was, I believe, $115 a month. So $125 to have cash, that was a lot of money for, for my mom. That was the only money that I had left. And uh, I ended up on the beach and it was super hot uh, in Florida. That was summertime, I believe. And uh, I was on the beach for, uh, for a few days because um, it was a bridge. And I always wanted to go back to Pensacola just to remind that moment. So it was a bridge that was extremely safe. Like people, were, like a lot of clubs and restaurants. So there's that ninth life, like never ended. So you never feel like you're alone on the beach because a lot of people are coming, just laying down, enjoying the moon, enjoying the sun. So to me, I know that I end up there, but in my mind, I was, <laughs> it's like I'm on vacation. So, uh, Two days I was there and there was a website for a lot of students coming to the U.S. that people place jobs. So um, um, people from uh, Germany and UK and all these uh, countries, they go on the website and they say, well, there is jobs, let's say, in Vermont. And all these jobs are cash, meaning you don't have, I didn't have the social security, no uh, work permit, just a visa. So no one will hire you. And I ended up finding a job in Vermont. So I moved from Pensacola. I took the Greyhound, the bus from Pensacola Beach, moved all the way to Vermont. And a guy that uh, he had the business finding jobs for students. So let's say the company paid him and he was paying us. So my first job in Vermont was a dishwasher. And I was a dishwasher for the Friday's restaurant. And I was a dishwasher for almost two years, uh, a year and seven months. And I worked seven days a week. I was so excited. I got paid $1,000 a week. And in 2006, that was a lot of money. But just for anyone to know, I worked from 6 a.m. in the morning until 2 a.m. I had three jobs. So I cleaned the floor from six until eight, from 8 a.m. I moved in cleaning dishes. Uh, Dishes I was cleaning from eight until 7 p.m. I believe something like that, seven or eight. And from eight, I used to move in the kitchen, cleaning the kitchen. So that was my job for seven days a week for almost a year and a half. And I don't know how many people can do that, but to me, $1,000 a week, that was a fortune. And that was cash. So I was young, uh, 21 years old. I had the intention to accumulate the cash flow. And as I used to work a dishwasher, my mind, gosh, I wish you can, you can videotape how the miner was thinking. Like I was thinking that I'm a wealthy person. Like I live in America, like I have a big house. I have a big business. So that's the law of attraction. And um, from Vermont, I moved to Sacramento, California. And then from Sacramento, I moved to LA. And I've been in Los Angeles for about 15 years. And then from LA in 2021, January 2021, I moved to Miami. Yeah. It has been quite the journey. And while you were in LA, you had a very interesting experience. Also, you were driving Uber and you were actually sleeping in your car. But right. you also had you had a very specific call because you had found a mastermind you wanted to be part of, which was like twenty thousand dollars. So tell us a little bit about that uh, resilience and persistency to get that dream going. Right. So for the audience that they're listening to me and thinking, gosh, like you've been a dishwasher, then an Uber driver, like how did you have a car? Just to be clear, 
for almost 14 years in America, I had 11 businesses. My mind was always to, so I moved to LA and I had uh, a job that I was a handyman, helping a handyman. And after that, I, uh, I started my first business. So just to make the long story short, during this time in LA, that I used to live there for about 14 years, I had 11 businesses that every business that I had, they all failed. So most of my life in America, I struggled. I, I was depressed. I had two relationships that uh, did not end up very well. And when it comes to finance, I, I, had, I, I was bankrupt three times and 11 businesses failed. Now in, 20, in 2015, uh, when I lost my last business, 2015 to 2016, um, that's when I lost my last relationship. I lost my last business. They repossessed my car. They uh, kicked me out from the place because I couldn't pay anything. I ended up becoming a Uber driver. And for people to know, like, how did you become a Uber driver? They repossessed my car. I talk about my story and my Facebook. But just to tell everyone, I had on my credit cards. Uh, 200 and something dollars. So people never been to LA. We, in LA, we have a lot of Korean spa. Korean spa, they work 24 seven. So it's a place that you pay $15 and you go, you enjoy the pool, jacuzzi, sauna, and there is rooms that you can lay on the floor for meditation, but actually because it's 24 seven, you can use that room for sleeping. Like no one will ever know that you are going to a spa to sleep. So when they repossessed my car, I was in LA, in, uh, Long Beach, California. The first thing that I, I, I knew they took my car because I didn't make payments for at least four months. So the first thing what I did, I took the Uber to a Korean spa in LA because I have to calm myself. The next day I wake up, I found a car company, a rental company in LA, which is hirecar.com. What they do, these guys, they, you can rent a car for $175 a week, and those cars are coming with Uber and Lyft license for you ready to drive. Like, you don't have to do anything else. So I pay $175, the only money left in my account. And I knew because if I rent the car, I can start driving for Uber, like, instantly and start generating cash flow. So this is me telling the long story short. In 2015, became a Uber driver. Um, and that car that I rented, I slept in the car for anyone to know, almost three years. And I know it's for a lot of people may seem insane, but two years and seven or two years and eight months, almost three years, I slept on the driver's seat and I was a Uber driver being completely lost. I cried a lot. I was depressed. Uh, 2016, the end of 2016, beginning of 2017, I wanted to commit suicide in LA. That was the lowest point of my life that I couldn't realize being in America for almost 14 years and ending up sleeping in the car. I, I believe I had a huge mental shock and um, I believe that I was the most stupid guy in the world. And I believe that the universe took everything away from me, the car, the business that I built. Um, so I got to a point that I did not want to leave. Um, the story gets very emotional. I don't want to go into that detail, but 2017, 2018, um, I wanted to, I was lost for two years being a Uber driver. I, I drove and I couldn't think of anything, what to do with my life. Like I was completely lost. And my mom called me from Moldova and I had to put a smile on my face, but I was so lost. But deep in my soul, I knew that this is not my life. And I always knew that. So I developed a beautiful relationship with the universe, with God. You call whatever you want to call and I remember the worst moments in my life when I used to sleep in the car. I used to cry and I looked at the universe and I said, you can take anything away from me. I will still love you. I never blame God or universe for anything. Like I know there is a supernatural power above that it's the moment they are testing me. So I accepted that. But the only thing I ask for guidance and 
it's very powerful. People that believe in universe, trust me, we are all energies and whatever you ask for, you will receive. 2017 to 2018, I wanted to change my life. And as being a Uber driver, I used to give a lot of advices for people. Like every, everyone that um, uh, got into my Uber car, I always used to talk, right? I used to talk about life and business and this and that. So most people, they were looking at me and asking like, what are you doing? But I, I knew this is not my life, but I could not answer like, what am I doing? Because I, I, I didn't know what I'm doing at Uber. But I knew that it's a chapter in my life that I have to move. So giving those advices, and I look at those people's faces, like they look at me like, this guy is a Uber driver. He seems like he says something right. And you can see on the people's faces this confusion. Like they love the advice, like they would love to take the advice. But at the same time, it's coming from a Uber driver. So you can see like in the mirror, like I used to drive and just telling them. And most of the people, they were just very confused because like, if you're so smart, like what are you doing? You know, like every normal person will think like that. So like, what are you talking about? And 2017, 2018, I tried to do a lot of research for edu online educational. And the reason why it's because I used to go a lot on Facebook and Instagram and seeing online educational space, it's growing and looking at those people, I'm like, gosh, like, like I'm smarter than them. Like, like I have, like you can tell those people are just trying to come up with information, but like I live that life. So I'm like, in my soul, like I'm better than those people, a lot better because I live every step. So I try to dip into the online educational space to understand like how in the world to get your knowledge and like how. So my very first coach and never worked with a coach ever in my life, never. And uh, I'm like, I had 11 businesses and I tried myself. And I know that there's people that succeed and there is people they don't succeed. I was one of those people that I failed. And I failed not because I was stupid and not because the industry was bad. Every industry that I had a business, they were very successful industry. I failed because I tried to reinvent the wheel. Now that I look back, if someone will be next to me and told me, Pavel, you just have to model what works. And the only way to have fully access, just have someone that done it, whatever you're trying to do, and you'll be the next one. I had a different mindset. My mindset was like, I will do it, everything myself. These people just want to get money from me. That was my mind. And that was the result. So, And many people have that same mindset. They're like, oh, I can do it myself. But right. um, in the end, if you see the most successful people in the world never did it alone. They all had mentors and coaches. So right. Every successful person, now that I became a millionaire, I look back and it's just a few small things for any person to realize Like when people ask me what's the success to become successful, it's that simple. And it seems to me like people don't want to take that answer. Like they're looking for a magical pill, but it's not. Imagine if you want to buy a laptop and I've been giving this to so many people, like you want to buy a laptop for your business. You're going to go to Apple store and buy a laptop, right? A lot of people, what they do, Crystal, they try to build their own laptop. So <laughs> if, you, if you get sick, what you do the first thing, you go and you see a great doctor, someone has amazing reviews. What a lot of people do, they try to become doctor themselves. They go to YouTube and they try to heal themselves. And that's the biggest problem that we see in our society because school doesn't teach you um, the successful steps in life. So the only way, it's a life hack, the only way to succeed, whatever the industry might be, you want to be a millionaire, you want to be a great doctor, you want to be whatever that might be, have fully access to someone that done it over and over again, and you'll be the next one. Like that's, that's the key. So 2018, 2017, I used to follow Russell Bronson. 
and he built a hundred million dollar online business a year and been listening to that person like gosh like my life story it's it's very powerful and like i knew i knew that i can do a lot better than anyone it's just and it's a normal thing for every person to believe that he's great that's that's amazing doesn't mean you put people down but it's a normal process to believe that you're amazing you're great you have to love yourself so wanted to work with russell and uh i <laughs> yeah twenty thousand dollars for the coaching program and i was a uber driver so i didn't have the money i, I absolutely did not have the money but i i had the coaching call and and i knew like i knew at that moment my life will change so i had to work for uber and lift for i believe i believe it was over than a year so that happened in the end of 2016 beginning of 2017 until 2018 and uh 2018 and 2018 that's when i work with russell 2018 to 2019 and my very first coaching program was a mindset coaching so with russell because i'm not going to go in details and talk about our coaching but at the moment i got the money i was very scared to make the investment and something that people need to realize i my mindset is all about trying like i know a lot of people they have fear to make an investment or making an excuse i don't have the money that was never me and i don't know why i was never afraid to make another step never in my mind i'm like i never work with a business coach what's gonna what's gonna happen the worst i'm gonna lose 20k i already lost all my life like what else can i lose another 20k that's fine at least like you know when life hits you so many times crystal like you i feel like you you don't even pay attention anymore that you might lose or you might not lose. I, it's, it, it's not like that. Your mind is shifting so much. And especially when you know that you're going to work with very successful people, it's like a validation, like the mind tells you like nothing to worry about. So I made the investment and thank you God I made that step because everything else was history until now. And uh, my very first coaching program, I learned how to convert your passion and skills into a very successful business. And when I used to look at the last 100 years, the most successful people and mentor and coaches like uh, Jim Ron and Bob Proctor and Tony Robbins, like all these people, what makes them so special? No one is a God, but what makes them special is the knowledge, the knowledge and how you convert them into a very successful business. This is what I wanted to learn. So because I used to use a lot law of attraction and i attract so many things in my life my very first coaching was mindset coach and just it's going to be a little shocking for a lot of people in my very first year that was uh 2019 in 2019 i made my first seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that year as a mindset coach and in 2020 I moved from the mindset coach, I became a business coach. Why? Because I wanted to teach people. The reason why I got so many clients and people ask me like, how are you gonna convert your skills? Like I have skills like you do. So I realized that was uh, something that I'd done it because if I was able to get my knowledge and build a 750K mindset coach, coaching business, I moved into the business coaching, teaching people to do what I did the exact steps so in 2020 um from the mindset coaching i uh, moved to a business coach and since then this is what i do i teach people how you can convert your passion and skills uh into a 10 20k a month the sky is unlimited it's all about the framework and it's all about it's a lot of detail especially with people never done it before uh, nothing to be afraid because every time when you build a foundation and looking back at my own life, uh, being a coach, the beginning, it's always very challenging because you never done it. It's kind of like if you never worked in the gym ever, 
But if you know the exercises that they are giving you, if you're going to do them consistent for the next few weeks, like you know you're going to build an amazing body. But because you never exercise ever in your life, it's the first day in the gym, it's going to get weird the first weeks. Like very painful, very weird because you never done it. So uh, same thing in the business coaching. Most people, they never done it, but the one that keep moving forward, they are the, the one are going to win. So now my life is from a broke Uber driver to a self-made millionaire. And I became in just two years. And I, I know if someone will ever tell me in 2017, 18, that when I used to cry, that in just a few years, you're going to become a millionaire, I will probably think those people are crazy because you have to study for five years in the university, right? Then you have to go look for a job. And we talk about dozens of years for you just to buy an apartment, like saving money for a house, right? Not many countries in the world that have the financial system like in the US, like to get, you know, loan. And a lot of countries, they talk about cash payments. Um, so now that I look back and I'm like, if I was able to do that, and it was very uncomfortable, but you know what made me very successful? by being in the room and just model something that works like and now when i tell people they don't want to hear that they don't like they they want me to say something and i understand what they they're expecting me to say some type of life hacks but it's not it's literally not um you want to become a lawyer you're gonna go and work with the best lawyer in new york that wins the top cases you want to become a great doctor you're not going to go and go and you know, work with someone because he's a doctor. You want to go work on a, with a doctor that he has the high ratio surgery uh, that saving a lot of lives. Like, and whatever you're trying to do in life, if you want to make money, you got to work with someone that makes millions and just model. Nothing else, just model. And that's the soup. That's the key to anyone who is listening to this uh, broadcast. Model what works. And speaking from experience, 95% of the people, the people that I speak on the phone every day, every week, everyone, they wanted to reinvent the wheel. And they lose. All of them. Most of them, they lose. Why? Why in the world you want to reinvent the wheel where you can buy the wheel? Just buy it and use it. No, they want to reinvent their own wheel. They spend years you get and they get to a point you know what they say yeah it's bad the industry is bad there is no money there it's it's sad and pe most people are not willing to make the investment they're not so why they fear it i'm afraid and number two i don't have the money it's an excuse so the reason why i document my life and I'm going to document moving forward is because I want people to know my life, what I came from. And if I was able to do it, anyone can do it. I had moments to give up a lot. I used to cry a lot. I was uncomfortable. Absolutely, yes. I was afraid just to you to know $20,000 to save being an Uber driver. That's that's a lot of money. That's the only money that I had. I, I couldn't, every dollar I used to save, every single dollar, dollar, and I used to drive, people to know, I used to drive from 6.30 in the morning. And uh, I had a gym membership. So I sleep in the car by a church in Pacific Palisade next to Malibu. I sleep by the church. I wake up at 6.30. There was a gym. I bought a membership to go to the gym. Every morning, I took shower, changed my clothes, got back into the car, get a 7-Eleven coffee, drive for Uber from 7.15 until 10.11 p.m., 7 a.m. in the morning until 10.11 p.m., seven days a week straight for, gosh, more than two years having that seven-day schedule. How many people can do that? And sleeping in the car. 
You tell me how hungry I was for my success. People ask me what motivates me. I did not want to sleep in the car, period. Like that's the best motivation. I did not need anyone to motivate me. And it's uh, so important what you mentioned here also in your story is basically that Uber drive um, uh, period was like a transition phase. And it's actually also okay if you are a little confused in the beginning, but in the middle of it, you understood that, okay, I don't want this to become the rest of my life. And you got a little bit more of motivation. Okay, so I have to do something to change it. And also with all of these like previous entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur, you know, experiences and so on, you actually, you are the kind of the guy who actually put your hand into your treasure boxes, like, okay, I can do this. And I remember this beautiful story you told about how you started to offer people to paint their houses and stuff. And Mm -hmm. you even had the guarantee, you said, Um, I will paint it. And if you don't like it, you don't pay me. And like, just think of the creativity and how that stands out and how that, you know, got your business going, right? So it's uh, being an entrepreneur is the creativity, it's the courage, it's like constant, like, um, you know, figuring out what is it people need? How can I use my, you know, knowledge and skills and how can I package them in such a way that uh, other people will actually benefit from it. So such a beautiful story and so many different uh, phases and, um, you know, um, to exemplify like how this can actually be done. Right. A lot of people, again, the power to work with a very successful person will change your life. Again, if what I'm going to show you right now, it's nothing new, but it's the process. It's the framework. I just wanted to know, there is people looking for jobs where you can wake up in the morning and create your own job. So let me give you an example because I see it all day, 24-7 in the world. Companies, they cry, they don't have the leads. So I had a car, just my car that I used to drive. And I, I'm like, I need, I need to come up with cash flow like literally the next day because I need to. And I, Uber and Lyft was not... Um, at that time, even a life um, when I was in LA, and that was, I don't know, 20, 2007, 2008. So I drove into a neighborhood, you know, wealthy neighborhood, not a millionaire, but like a good, very wealthy neighborhood. And I used to drive and I parked my car and on that uh, main street and I knocked on people's door. I used to pick houses that I can tell like they need some work. Um, and I know that people are very weird because I was a young kid, 23 years old, um, not a homeless looking, like just a nice clothes, knock on the door. And I said, and my English was so bad and knock on the door. And I say, look, I, I'm a great painter. I was a great painter. I I don't think so, but I knew that if, if I want to do a job, I will do it a hundred percent. So I did had painting in the past. I used to help my mom building our house back in Moldova. So that was my, uh, my offer. I'm like, you don't know me. I don't know you, but I want to paint your driveway. For example, like the windows. And I can see that it's the paint, it's peeling, but no obligation. This is what I'm going to do. So I did not even let them say one word. So this is what I told them. Look, I'm going to paint. I'm going to use the best paint from Home Depot. I'm going to buy the paint myself. You don't have to pay me anything. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take all your uh, old paint from the windows. I'm going to repaint the windows in the color that you want. And if you like, you pay me. And if you don't like, nothing to worry about. Those people are shocked. Like, who does that? And that's the power of having a great offer and the power of guarantee and the power of believing in you because I believed in my own work. Like I, I knew that I will paint those windows like my own windows, like very accurate. And guess what? I, client after clients, I had a painting, <laughs> you can call a company, I don't know, for four or five months, I believe. The entire neighbors, they started loving me and telling other neighbors, and I used to give discount. 
to guys saying, look, this is my price, but if you give me two other neighbors, I will charge you this one. Gosh, have I been in school knowing to do that? No. But I guess I always had that in me since I was a kid because in in school when I was ninth grade in Moldova, <laughs> I used to drive to um, uh, outside the city, like how you call those uh, uh, places outside the city, like uh, villages. Mm-hmm. I used to drive into the villages and asking people that have pigs because I wanted to sell those pigs into the farmer's market in the capital of uh, Moldova, Chisinau. And the ninth grade, uh, people or uh, kids were asking money from parents and I used to make money uh, because I always wanted to know why our neighbor has a four-story house, so wealthy, but my mom, she's such a sweet human being, such an amazing heart, and we don't have the money. I always wanted to study that. Like, what? What is that? And I realized there is no magic. Now that I look back and I realize it's no magic, and since ninth grade, I wanted to understand why some people can be successful and other people cannot. And now that I look back, I can tell anybody, anybody can become successful. Anyone. You don't have to be born successful. I was born below middle class. So, and again, I'm not no special about me. It's the, the drive, the desire. And especially when you work with very successful people, you will crush it. Yeah. And your story about the painting stuff reminds my story of how I started actually business in Norway. I had some friends who like, you know, reached out to me and said, could you come and help us to clean our apartment? And as a student, I needed something extra, you know, to do so that I could get extra money. And after the first time I did it, they liked it so much. So they were really like shouting out to all of their friends. And in one year's time, I had like over, I think, like 30 clients all over Oslo. And I couldn't like almost handle it anymore. I I should have actually like, you know, (laughs) hired more people. So and that was that, you know, the quality and, you know, ability to, you know, offer you know, what, what people needed and be there and help them. So that's simple. It is. And uh, Crystal, not many people are willing to do that because they have an ego. When you leave your ego at home and people not willing to do anything without they get paid first, and that's wrong because you have not built the foundation. So just to uh, give you one short example, a few months ago, I had a photographer that came to me in Miami and we had a call one of the, uh, not a friend of mine, but someone from our circle and very good photographer. I'm like, no clients. And he asked me for advice. I'm like, and he paid me for that advice. I'm like, and I said, look, what I'm going to tell you, I'm not sure if you're willing to do that, but what I'm going to tell you, you are going to win by the end of the day. So the question is, are you going to do it or not? Because maybe you might not like what I'm going to tell you. Just did you know that was a photographer, amazing skills, zero clients. That's the exact framework that I told him. You got to go. People that are financially stable in Miami, and I showed them the way how you can find them. And this is what I told them. Look, you find these people and that realtors, especially that sell real, real estate, those people need portfolio and photography. And I specifically point him an exact audience. And this is what I told him. You've got to reach out to these people, offer them Photoshop with no cost. But when I'm delivering you the picture and you love it, you pay me. And if you don't, you don't pay me. Now, he's probably one of the top in Miami with the clients. And again, how many people are willing to do that? Because every time you call, my people want to get paid it's not. If you want to build an empire, be willing to uh, be willing to build your brand, the foundation, the trust in any industry. And pr- I promise you, any business that you have now, if you are going to offer your service with no cost, but you put all in into that service, I'm not saying you have to do it for life. Do it for one month. But I promise you, the study in psychology has been proven from 10 people that you're going to offer free photography almost seven are willing to pay. 
always, always, any country, any economy, doesn't really matter. Housekeeping, you just name that. So that's the power of uh, generating your cash flow literally the next day. If you wake up the next day and you can offer your services, you don't have to know anyone. They will start knowing you. Yeah, it's really uh, beautiful. Uh, so uh, to wrap it up, I have one final question today. Sure. Who is your who is your hero or role model? Oh my God, uh, this might seem very arrogant, uh, but it's not. It's me. And uh, I'm looking back because no one knows my life story better than me. And uh, many times I want to go back and I want to hug that kid and just tell him that I'm next to you. I. I've been, I suffer a lot in my life. People look at me now and they look at me because I'm a millionaire, but they see only, only the things that it, it, it very shiny to them. I suffer a lot in my life. And to me, the person that was able to be hit so many times and go through so many challenges that I know everyone has their own life story. How can you not admire that person? How? And becoming a kind human being, a lovely son and trying to love your, helping your family and, and loving everyone and helping. How can you not become a hero for yourself? And I do admire a lot of people in this space. I do admire, but I always go back to that person because he was able to do it, Crystal. I could be in a Uber car being a driver and still drive. And God knows where my life will be. Yeah, that's such a beautiful way to look at it. Um, thank you. And um, do you have any final tips or words for our listeners and viewers who also would like to become a millionaire? Uh, millionaire, it's very, I know it's a very fancy word, but becoming a millionaire these days, it's, it's nothing. Uh, used to be maybe 20 years ago. Um, Anyone can become a millionaire. <clears throat> what I'm going to give you the three tips. Number one, which from my experience, a lot of people are very stuck, don't know that they have skills. Anybody have a skill that you are watching this video, wanting to know it doesn't matter if you're 19 years old. It doesn't matter if you're 65. It's all about skills. You don't have to have a college degree or being an expert. So you need specialized knowledge. and pay someone to help you to do what you are planning to do. Someone that already done it. So if you want to become a millionaire, you work with millionaires. You want to become a great doctor, you hire a doctor. Pay them whatever they ask the price. I promise you, you'll be the next one. Whatever the industry, that's the tip I'm going to give you. Don't try to Google or YouTube 24-7, saving the cash. Your cash should be invested in you. And if you do that, because a lot of people are listening to this video and I'm sure not everyone is going to follow those steps. Unfortunately, it's part of the world, but the one who are going to make that step to make an investment, find someone, pay them, you will win. A thousand percent, you will win. That's my advice. Yeah, it's a universal law. It works. Mm -hmm. It works, it works it, to me. To you, Crystal, to anyone, it works. It's, uh, again, get very comfortable when you try to do something that you never done it before. I just want you to be prepared that you can get uncomfortable. That's a normal process in anything that you do. It's a normal process. Technically, the rewards are coming when you make this step that you never made it before. It just comes all at once from all over the places. And like, oh, gosh. One month, nothing. And then the second month, like you get attacked with rewards and cash flow and clients and leads. It, it happens all the time. Yeah. So, so be prepared. Yeah. Be prepared. Every yeah. challenge, it's a new way to discover yourself. Never say why this happened to me. If that happened to you, be happy. It's a yeah. way to move to the next step. Yeah. There is always a treasure or gift hidden in all of the challenges. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Well, so, and uh, beautiful, amazing 
um, abundant uh, adventures are ahead of you. And thank you for sharing so many of beautiful stories uh, from your life. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thank you. And to all of our listeners and viewers, please, as always, uh, like, share and comment. And till the next time, see you then. Mahalo.